What's up guys? We're back in our chimpanzee avatar and today we are ignoring the incredibly horrible weather <laughs> and uh, we're going to start building our African elephant habitat and this is the second to last habitat in the Africa section we have. We're going to build our pride rock lions here if you can even see through the rain um, and I think we'll build an elephant habitat here in this space we've got um, free to the right. However, as this alert is telling us, the other elephant in the room, <laughs> other than the African elephants, is that we don't have a lot of money. And this has been a problem in the last episode, and it's still a problem in this one. So we do need to sort out our financial situation. And I think the best way we're going to have to do that is to sell a couple of the animals we've already got in the, in the zoo that, to another zoo. You know, animals that we don't need, that we've bred. Um, rather than releasing them into the wild and then we can have a go at increasing our education because currently if you look at our guests they're happy with the toilet they're happy with the energy they're fairly happy with hunger and thirst but their, their needs are generally being met the problem i think is that their education is pretty low like that's by far the lowest one and like everyone's pretty happy here um apart from not having an umbrella um, it looks like we could probably put the ticket price up again because no one's complaining about it. So I'm just going to make that 90 and 45 and see what people say. Because um, that's a big uh, money. <laughs> that's a big income for us. Uh, if you can see here, ticket sales is massive. But another one is donations. And we're making quite a lot from our shops now. Um, however, and some of them are adoptions, which is good, which comes from the information center. And I think I think you boost that with uh, with having better education um, but a lot of this is all kind of tied together and I think if our education goes up our donations are going to go way higher um, so you can see we're not like our leopards are getting nothing at the minute and our gharals are getting nothing it's 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 one of those where it's like there's definitely room our water buffalo get 15 grand <laughs> I think I think there's room for improvement on the donation front so that's what we're going to aim for now and I'm going to do that if, if we have a look at it actually quickly uh, donations you can see some of these uh, habitats here where we've got bigger donations are where we've we put more stuff in like we put more infrastructure in I don't know what this one is uh, this that's a bit weird um, but you can see like even the bonobos have a decent amount so it's partly going to be where the guests are in the area and partly how much education we put in but a lot of them we haven't done as much as we could do like the giant otters here have get are getting loads considering what they are you know and, and the interest in them um, and i think that's mainly because if you look at the the giant otter habitat we've got an information talk we've got a tour that talks about them uh, we've got signs and we've got education speakers in here so we're kind of doing everything we can do uh, in order to boost the education and look at the little oh my goodness there's so many of them now look at them have we got, are there too many males or is everyone happy? No, everyone's good. And they've got little bobbers. Three little bobbers. How cute is that? Uh, but, you, but you can see that like there's a lot more room for improvement here. Because these these donation bins are getting so much money compared to the, the others, the alternatives. So this is the plan. And I'm just going to take a bit of time now and go through and boost the education on all of the habitats that I think need it. Um, so I want to go through now and I'll see you in a bit.
Okay, so as you can see, we've massively improved the coverage of education around our zoo by adding the education speakers. Uh, we do need to add in a few more education boards and then I'm going to set up another two uh, education tours to go around our zoo and hopefully between all of that, it should be enough. So another thing I'm going to do is add a bunch of these conservation boards around the zoo because they do boost the education, they're just not specific to any animal. So I'm going to add a few of them in and it'll just add a bit of decoration to the zoo as well, as well as actually educating our guests. But we've not got many of them in so far, like there's barely any education in this whole section. And these can be put anywhere because they're not animal specific. So I think this is going to be a good way to increase our coverage as well. Okay, I've added a considerable amount 
of uh, <laughs> conservation boards around. You can see the whole, all these like blue rectangles. Um, there's quite a lot around there now, which is pretty good. So we've got quite good coverage now um, of the zoo. I'm hoping that, well, if I play, it might already boost our education a little bit. Although I, oh, there you go. You can see it going up. I imagine this is going to take time to go up though, as the guests get more educated on average. So they're going to need to be in the zoo for a period of time and then, uh, and then it'll eventually come out. Uh, same with, oh, there you go. Many guests think tickets are overpriced. Same thing with the, the price of the tickets. I'm going to have to probably put that down. Um, let's put it to 85 and 45 and let's see see what guests think of that i mean at the minute they're not they're not actually complaining uh on mass yet so <laughs> let's see but these things do oh they go 45 percent. it is going on now the last thing we're going to do to increase education is add another two tours we're going to add a tour for the asia part of our zoo and a tour for the africa part of our zoo at the minute we've just got the tour right at the start which goes through the americas uh, but we do want to increase this look at all the people in our zoo my goodness, we've almost got 5,000 guests. That's pretty good. And 45% education. I mean, these are these are getting pretty good. I think these are still going up as well. The hunger and thirst, which is good. Um, currently, everyone's just complaining about the rain, but <laughs> not much we could do about that. <laughs> so, oh, I think it's clearing up a bit as well, which is good. Um, another thing is we could probably do with some marketing. We've got nothing for marketing other than... Um, if you increase, like if you add in these uh, cameras, where are they? The Habitat web cameras, it'll increase marketing or you can pay for marketing specifically. Do they think it, do they think it's overpriced? Okay, let's put it to 80 and 40. And we'll let them, that's what we had it on at the start. Let's see if they like that. That may be the most they're willing to pay. So I don't want that to be a negative. We don't want the zoo to be too expensive. 46% is good. Oh no, someone's died. Oh, Willow. One of our dolls. Oh, look at our little doll pack in here. They're so cute. Now, I think I'm going to start our Asia tour near this exhibit section because then this, this half of the zoo over here is the Asia section and this half of the zoo over here is the Africa section. So it's a pretty good kind of middle, middle spot where they branch off. And they can then take this path up, which is the uh, the more accessible path, I think. I think this is the shorter route. This is the more accessible one. Um, so let, let's, pref I prefer they took that one anyway for the tour. So let, let's add this in here. This is going to be point number one for our tour. And uh, it's going to be an intermission. It's going to be called Asia Tour Start, this post. And then we're going to add a number of others. We're going to add a tour point at each of our habitats or at least one point at each of our habitats. Okay, so we've laid all of our tour points now for the Asia tour and I'm going to select the tour start to be here and then select all the points that we're going to include along the tour. I'm going to delete all of these uh, tour points that are already put into the tour because I don't know why they're in there. They shouldn't be in there. Um, and then I'm going to select all the points that we want along this tour. So it's going to be the water buffalo, the then the taper, then the Chinese pangolin and then we're going to walk up and have our first guest break and then we're going to have the red pandas and then pop in to see the 
Uh, oh, I've forgotten how to say it. The horses. Um, and then have our second break quite shortly after. Then we can go see the monkeys. Um, then the Komodo dragons. Then the Indian elephants, which would be an interesting one. And then they can move on down, see the Siberian tigers, and then the dolls, and then have another guest break. So that's their third break. You've got to throw in the intermissions, I think, otherwise the uh, the guests get bored. This is a long stretch as well for them to walk. So we're going to see the Siberian tigers again, and then the Amur leopard. This is the only one I'm concerned about, is it's a long way for them to go without having any guest facilities. Uh, but there's not really need for them on this on that section of the park, of, of the zoo. Uh, but then they do get their, their tour break four after that. And they've got a quick fire seeing tigers, the siamangs, the orangutans, and the gibbons. And then finally, they can walk all the way around, swing back around, see the Himalayan brown bear. Probably then go back to the... Oh, wait, no. I clicked the... I thought we could go to the same point more than once, but you can't. So I'm just going to move that up the list to where it should be, um, which is after the Chinese pangolin. And I think that's everything um, we're going to see. And then complete tour points set up. Oh, the tour end. Ah, see, this is the wrong tour. Ah, so I've just realized that I've messed up the existing tour that we had because I've gone for the Americas and Exhibits tour rather than starting a new tour. Um, but that's fine. We'll just edit the name and this can be our Asia tour. And then we'll make sure that it ends on the Himalayan brown bears. Um, rather than having that be one of the points. Uh, select tour end, Himalayan brown bear. And then they can go and do whatever they want to do in the zoo. Okay, so in order to finish this, I need to create a new work zone. So I'm going to go work zones, new work zone, and then select all of the points that we just went through. Okay, so this is everything in the work zone. It's going to be called Asia tour. So now we've got, ooh, I need to delete these work zones as well. I just added by accident. Um, okay, so we've got Asia Tour has 22 buildings in it. Um, we're going to need to add a staff room into it as well. Um, so this, I think I might just add all the staff rooms into it so that they can rest wherever they need to. Um, because I don't really want to restrict the tour guides on that. So let's add a third one. Uh, they won't need the Africa side of the zoo, actually. So just those, those should be good, actually. Those three, they've got three staff rooms because um, it's just the educators who are going on it anyway. So that's absolutely fine. And then our staff, we need to get our educators and assign uh, someone to the tour. So we probably need a new educator, which isn't a great idea in some ways because <laughs> we're hiring someone new. Uh, which has been the opposite of this trend. But I think they will give us return on our investment in this case. So, oh wait, I'm going to go to the educators, which is a bit further down. Someone's got new no work zone. We're going to add you to the... In fact, I'm going to add you to something. No, I'm going to add them to the works, to the tour. And then, when you know, in the future, they'll be trained up. They'll, they'll be able to do more. But we, we can charge for tours. So we need to make sure we're doing that. Now, we do need to now uh, to create a different tour. So the entrance guest, uh, America's and Exhibits tour at least has all the buildings in it, but we do need to create that tour again because I've messed it up. <laughs> so we're going to add a new tour. This is going to be called America's and Exhibits tour. And this tour start is going to be here. And then the tour points is going to be the otters, they're going to go around, see the otters, and then they're going to come and enjoy the nice uh, wildlife area, then have some guest facilities, then go on to the tapers, and then through probably a toilet. Oh, we need to add toilet breaks to the other one as well. Okay, so they're going to go to the toilet, then they're going to come see the, I can't remember which one this is, I think there's guanas, then goliath frog. The clicking will let me get in. There you go, Goliath Frog. Then come back. See the Axolotl. The Golden Poison Frog. Lemon's Poison Frog. And then I think we'll just... And then we just finish outside, don't we? That was what that one was. Complete the setup. Um, we do need to add the toilets to this tour as well. So the Asia tour. I'm going to add this toilet 
in straight away. Oh, I think we might need to add in another one because it's already on a different tour. Okay, it's fine. We're adding in a tour point there and then they can add them in. There we go. And tour point 39 is going right to the top. We just need to add in some more toilets. I completely forgot about toilets. I'm going to make this tour. I feel like it's going to be $10. I don't know if that's too much or not. I'm going to make this color. This one can be purple. It looks like it's got a pretty good um, rating so far as well. So that may be the previous tour <laughs> that we're just stealing the rating from. Uh, but we've got uh, an educator on it now as well. So hopefully they'll be able to, to do a good job. Now we need to make the second tour. This is going to also be $10 and we're going to have this one be green. I think perhaps all of these aren't selected is the problem here. Okay, all the tour points are now set up, which is good. We've still got um, Coco Puff on uh, America's and Exhibits tour, so hopefully they'll still carry on doing a good job. And then we need to set up a final tour for the uh, Africa section of our zoo. So I'm going to have this one be here. Oh yeah, it's already the tour starts. So the educator meets the guests here. That's fine. What's the tour end do then? Educator ends the tour. Ah, okay. So I think maybe for our Asia tour, we do need to actually change that and have a final tour point because the Himalaya, we don't want them to end at the Himalayas. We want them to probably lead all the guests back here into the, the shopping area. Um, so I'm going to add another tour point here and this is going to be Asia tour end. And then if we go back to our Asia tour, I'm just going to set that to be the end point for the tour. And then we can add in the Himalayan bears as well, right at the end. I'm hoping that it's not accessible is going to change um, as we play <laughs> and they get assigned a keeper. Because it definitely, there we go, it's operational. I was going to say, it definitely is accessible, right? This tour is not ready yet though, so we do need to get this going. Now the final thing we need to do is actually set up the tour. So we need to select the points and this is where I'm going to go through the actual route they're going to take. So they're going to start uh, by going straight to the Nile Lechwi. Then they're going to go to see the giraffes, which are nicely modelled there. Um, then they're going to come in and see the African penguins and then they're going to have a little toilet break. Then they're going to move on, see the pygmy hippos then the Akarpi, and then they're going to come to the first uh, tour uh, break and have some, some snacks, have some food and toilet there as well. Then they're going to go down through the Lima habitats. They're going to stop off and see the ring-tailed, the black and white ruffed and the red ruffed lemurs, come out the back, go down to the African wild dogs. And then unfortunately they are going to have to turn around and walk back but at least sending, sending them this way, they can see the scimitar horned oryx. And I'm not going to make them see the giraffes again because I've already seen them earlier. Um, and then do a quick uh, stop at the bonobos. And then they can come up, go to the Africa tour break two, come along and see the western lowland gorillas. And then finally, they can go round and see the Western chimpanzees. And obviously we will add in the lions and the elephants to this tour when we're done as well. And then they'll probably just finish around the lion habitat. Probably go see the elephants, come back and see the lions and then finish off around there. And we're going to make this $10 as well. This one is going to be a nice red. Oh no, Kim, Kim and Bill. Oh, these are both legends of the zoo. Oh, Bill. Well, did you have any have any boys? I don't think he did. I think he ended up just... I mean, we didn't want him to have more boys because they kept fighting with him, but <laughs> I think, uh, no, there's no more males. Oh, we're going to need another male buffalo then before we, uh, before we get to Kim. Let's reset and get a water buffalo. Oh, I'm not sure we can. There's not any, there's not any males at the minute other than that very expensive uh, one that we don't really need. Um, so it's albino as well. So let's leave that for now. Um, though Kim has died as well. Bless her. 
who's been our breeding female since the start for the Komodos. So uh, they're hungry, but they're just being fed now. So that's why. Um, so we're going to need a new female, although one of these is probably going to, unless unless they're related. Oh, no, I think they are children. Oh, okay. They've only got a few children here. So as long as we pick one of the females that aren't their child, should be fine. Oh, okay. We'll leave that then. Leave that as that is. One of the females there can become the new breeding female. And we don't have to buy any more Komodo dragons, which is a result. Now, I'm going to put the zoo ticket price up to 82 and 40, 41. Because I want to see where the actual line is for when people get annoyed. There's no crime, which is good. Um, and it looks, let's have a look at our education. 47 now, which is great. Okay, that's good. So hopefully that'll increase our donations. Um, if we go to finance, it's one of those harder to measure metrics, but I think our donations have gone up quite a lot actually since we started. So that's pretty good. Hopefully that'll continue. We've definitely got enough donation bins around. But yeah, we're getting we're getting a reasonable amount on some of these. I don't think the Gariel are ever going to get any because they are that bit further away. But yeah, we've got 18 grand. I remember that was 15 before at the start of the episode and that was seven and now it's eight grand. So hopefully this education is going up generally. Um, and as it does, you can see, that hopefully we'll start to steer into profit soon. Um, it's a bit hard to tell, but the profit, that's a lot closer than it was. I'm hoping that's going to steer back. Guests think the tickets are overpriced whenever it goes over 80. So maybe, oh, I'm going to pause. I'm going to put it back to 80 because I don't think it's going to make a massive difference. 80 and 40. And then we're going to have a look. How are you starving? Are you just like stuck on a rock and you're not moving again? Okay, well, if you're starving, where's the food? Oh, okay. There may be a legitimate reason here. <laughs> um, let's put you on food. Yeah, I'm sure she has attracted protesters. Can you eat something? Uh, Keeper and vet. Both of you run over here. Yeah, I think what we're going to do is we're going to put all of the animals in quarantine so they can recover. Let the vet get on top of the, uh, the the feeding situation and then they'll be able to take over quite nicely after. Oh, I've just realized we've not got enough space in quarantine, actually. Um, just the ones... Well, if you're outside the gender ratio, we'll just release you into the wild anyway. There you go. That solves the problem. And I think the ones that are starving can be taken to quarantine and then they'll be fed in quarantine. Can you stop cleaning this habitat, please? It's this person's problem. Like, put the food down and go feed the lemurs. Hopefully they're leaving now. I think they're leaving, at which point, the second they get out of the habitat, we can put them, uh, we can put them by the, the keeper hut and then they can bring the food quickly. Because I think that's going to be the quickest way. Otherwise, all our lemurs are going to starve. No, stop cleaning. Okay, who else have we got who's around? There's two on Africa entrance. I'm going to move you to Africa middle and you can help out. Oh no, one of our, one of our tapers died. Oh, of old age. Oh, bless. How many have we got? Oh, they're on outside of the integrating now. So we need a new we need a new male. Birds taper. Oh wow, we got loads. Like this is a young male, six. Let's get him. And then we've got a female and that will all be good. Let's send you to the zoo. Send you to quarantine. And it looks like we've got a female in here already that we need to release or quick trade. Ah, uh, is it because this one is one that needs to be released? Okay, well, we'll release this one into the wild. And then the one that's in quarantine, we can move into the habitat as well. We've got a keeper in here now. Oh, 
Okay, there we go. They need to get the food for the starving lemurs. Yes, you do. Right, I'm going to move you over here so you get there quicker. Get your food and then I'll chuck you in the habitat. <laughs> There they are, preparing the food. Oh, it's moving. Oh, there we go. Gotta say, it wouldn't be my, my kind of food. Okay, grab the bucket. Grab the bucket. There we go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. A bit of, bit of speed would be nice. <laughs> and then I'll pick you up and put you down right outside the door. Now go, go, go feed them. Yes, run, please. And then the starving lemurs can finally eat. There we go, food on the platform. Because the protesters are here and we don't need that. That won't help our finances either. Look at them. Okay, everyone eat, please. Run. Okay, thankfully, all of them are eating now. There we go. The number's going down. The number's going down. Okay, and they've dropped food in here as well, so everyone can eat there too. You're not starving. Got a couple of bits that need repairing. Oh, I've got pangolins about to inbreed. That's not good. Who's the, uh, the extra? Got too many. Oh, no. Oh, they just... Is Yan really young? Oh, Yan's the baby. Okay, we'll just put Yan on contraceptives and then they won't inbreed. And you've passed quarantine, which is good. I'm going to move you into the habitat. And then the others can be fed in quarantine. Oh, I think they get moved. We could actually just move them back in now because they can eat now. Let's move you into the lemur habitat. Oh, you're about to inbreed. Have you already done it? If you're all related, why are you all here? Well, I think you need to be released, don't you? There you go. You stop mating with your sisters. It's weird. Stop it. Okay. Everyone's been fed. Everyone's been fed. We've sorted out our education and that subsequently has sorted out our money. Look at that. That's what we like to see. And it's going up. So that's pretty good. Um, let's have a look at our education again. 53. Okay, so really, I mean, 53 isn't exactly a great score. <laughs> but um, what we've learned from this is that you just need to do like a little bit, like just the very basic of educate the basics of education and yours will be fine. <laughs> Uh, so also the other thing you can do to boost your uh, education is I think doing animal research like this. So that does help, um, which is an interesting metric. Um, the last thing we could do is increase our numbers through marketing. I don't think I'm going to do that in this episode. I might do that in the next one. And we can do that by either paying for marketing or putting in the Habitat webcams. But I don't think I want to put it. I don't think I want to pay for marketing. Oh my goodness. Broken barrier to what? To the orangutan habitat. Well, that is not good. That is, that really is not good. Okay. Uh, slightly alarming. Who's the mechanic? And they're all the way over there. Right. You're going to need a bit of a lift. Because I don't think you'd get there even remotely in time. Let's put you outside the door and see if you can quickly get in before any, any of them jump out. There you go. He's fixed it. What a legend. Yes, Dennis. Oh, we've had another... Oh, one of our old buffalo have died. Okay, I've clicked it. It's not gone green. Bless. We do need that new mail as well. Might grab them if we can. Let's see. No, still no males. We can get more females, but that's just more males to feed at the minute. Until we have a male, it's... it's uh, I just want to keep an eye on our finances. <laughs> Look at the zoo. Look how nice and sunny it is as well. It's bustling. That's awesome. That looks a bit broken. Yep, going to call you for that. It's always something broken at the zoo. 
<laughs> Look at the green though, I love it. How pretty. And we've just got our chimpanzees in here and they are having a great time, I think. They haven't told me, but they look like they're having fun in their like forts that they've got. Did we manage to put bedding in here? We did, yes. Okay, so that's good. Look at them, just chilling. There's not a lot of guests on this side of the zoo, but hopefully the tours can fix that. And if we uh, if we train up our staff... Oh, I've got fired ones as well. If we train up our two educators that we've got, because um, I'm concerned that they're not going to be able to do their tour very effectively. But they seem to be doing okay so far. And if we train them up, that'll hopefully help as well. Uh, for Look at all the people arriving. There we go. Come on, go see the chimpanzees. I think we've got some mechanic issues. Just quite a lot that's uh, that's broken, but that's fine. It's just because of power. They'll, they'll resolve them eventually, though, anyway. So, I think the next thing is to build the elephant habitat. Okay, so now we're going to start building our elephant habitat. We need to have a look at their requirements. So, if we go to Zoopedia and we type in African elephants, African savanna elephants, we'll find out, yes, they're endangered, so they definitely qualify for the zoo, but also we need to know how many we're going to have in the habitat. So we need three to 15, and there's going to be one male, and then probably, I mean, we'll probably do the minimum to start with because they're quite expensive. We'll probably have two females and one male, um, which means we're going to need at least three elephants, but realistically, it's going to end up being, let's say, five and then three babies, it's kind of planned for that. That's going to be 6,000 square meters we need. Um, if it were four, okay, we're still we're still looking about the 6,000 mark. Um, so we'll, we'll do, I'll probably go way over knowing me. <laughs> but I'm going to start with that in mind. And they do have a water requirement. So it's, it's 6,000 square meters of land and 555 square meters of water. Um, but it's grade four and taller than two meters. Now grade four, annoyingly, isn't going to work with our wooden logs. So we're going to have to come up with a different solution than the wooden logs. Um, we could use one of our other materials here that we've got, or we could use rocks like we did for our, for our Indi uh, Indian elephant habitat. Um, and that is over here in the zoo. And here we basically, we put the, the barriers in for the monkeys, but then we just lined the habitat with rocks for the elephants. And I'm very tempted to do something similar on this side of the, of the, uh, the zoo as well. Um, because I don't really want to be using concrete. I mean, I know rocks are essentially the same thing, but it just to keep in with the, the nature of the zoo at this point and keep the same aesthetic going around, um, I think I'd rather do that. So I'm going to move this wimber tree out of the way. Put it here, which will... Does that... Oh no, that's not going to help the solar panels. Uh, let's whack it. Uh, where's it going to go? Let's whack it here for now. We can always move it later. Um... And then we are going to carry this path along because the negative impact on guests is there. I, what I think we we could probably do, which would be a more interesting way to do this, is to have an elevated path um, that provides a bit of like a viewing area and, and the habitat can be around this area. So let's, let's move this water treatment further in to the habitat here. We need to keep it in the same line because we don't want it to disrupt our... Uh, our, uh, our path. If, if, if basically, if this negative ring goes onto the path, then, it, then the guests aren't going to be happy. <laughs> so we're just moving it back. We're going to add a staff path in here to connect all of that up. In fact, I'm very tempted just to attach the staff path like that. There we go. And then it doesn't have to connect to this path at all. Right. And we can delete this previous path and perhaps take this path back slightly. Now we're gonna elevate it. So I'm gonna go to, I think it's seven meters wide. Yeah. I'm gonna press the U key, which is gonna elevate it. And I think I'm gonna do this on a slope because I'd rather, I mean, it's not a very accessible slope, but I'd rather it be more accessible than putting stairs in because, you know, accessibility requirements are important and we need to be thinking about that. Now that is still quite an incline, but there's not a way to get a, well, there is, you can get a more gradual incline, but it's quite complicated to do it. I tell you what, let, let's do it in this case to show you what, how, how you would do it. Let's put some stairs here to be the main the main route up and we'll just have it be one, one thing higher. And then we're also going to come across and have a more accessible route down here. And now to do that, you need to hold down the control icon. Uh, is it the control? Yes, the control icon. There we go. If you if you click away from where we were, and now you can see I can move right up to the same area as uh, as this habitat, as this path here. And if I hold the shift key, 
I can move the path so it's like it's just slightly below the level we have there. And I can put a little dot there. And then we're going to do the same again over here. I, again, if I'm pressing control, I can separate that out. And then using the shift key to just lower it gradually again. And I want these to be roughly in line. I'm right clicking to get away from it, holding down control. And then I'm going to, it's going to go exactly where the tree, we just put the tree. Uh, if I put the third path here, then at least it'll, it'll kind of demonstrate it in a, a reasonable way. Oh no, it needs a bit more. It needs a bit more uh, space. I'm going to put the third one here. And then, yeah, that can go in like that. And then hopefully these will connect up together reasonably well. I mean, it's got a bit of a dent here. I might just get rid of that one. Yeah, I think that works. Yeah, there we go. And now we've got a much more gradual incline. And in fact, we could just whack the tree right in the middle. And that makes the whole area look a little bit nicer. But you can see now this is a way more gradual slope that we have uh, for this, this section rather than that steep slope. So this is much more wheelchair accessible. And that's what we're going to go with. I like that. Now I am going to build a little bit of a platform. I'm going to have a grid here. Uh, it's going to come out maybe just this far. I keep, I keep building out. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably good. Um, and yeah, we're going to have it like like that. Um, there's a bit of a platform there. And we're going to design a little building, I think. So it's got a bit of... Oh, I'm in a tree. Um, it's going to have a bit of shelter. Because um, I want it to... I want the guests to be shielded from the uh, scorching 42 degrees Celsius heat, which is <laughs> insane. I think I would burn in like five minutes. <laughs> um, so we definitely need to have some of that going on. And uh, I also normally have resisted building up because it basically just uses concrete. But some of you pointed out in the comments that you can just um, put whatever material you want underneath and basically just say, well, actually, we built it out of wood instead of, you know, concrete and Whatever the, I mean, this, these are wooden posts to be fair, uh, but you know, we can just build something else on the underside. If we get anything that's filter material wood, you can just grab any kind of material and cover it, cover it up like that, you know, going down a bunch of these and you'd never know. So I think I'm going to do that now. I'm going to find a wood I like and that kind of matches the habitat and then put that in. Okay, I've just done a very, oh, I've missed a tiny bit here. Um, I've just done a very basic uh, wooden log design around the outside because it ties in quite nicely with the habitat. Although, my goodness, this one needs some maintenance. Look at that. That's pretty terrible. Let's request the mechanic. Um, but the dark wooden logs are what we've got on so many of these habitats now. Like, that's a good example of it there. Uh, these are in good health. 79%. There we go. <laughs> Um, but it's gonna so it's gonna it's gonna tie in quite nicely and it's just a bit of a, a platform here we've got a we've got a fence too which i'm assuming is 
Is it the right height? Yeah, it looks about right. I think for normally for it to be a fall risk, it has to be about 1.5 meters high. Um, it can be 1.8 if you really don't want people like getting in or out, but I, I'm pretty sure it's like 1.5 normally, plus a reasonable standard of care. Like it, it's tall enough that children can't fall in without climbing over it. Um, and that's kind of where the standard of care comes in for parents to look after you, you know, make sure your children don't jump over the edge of a thing and you don't jump over yourself. But that's that's kind of expected. You see that in a lot of zoos anyway. It's not like the, the barriers are always impossible, like to get around if you wanted to, you could, you could get around them. Um, it's just they just generally assume you don't want to face a massive drop <laughs> into a into a habitat full of wild animals, uh, which is a fairly safe assumption a lot of the time, I think. Uh, so what what biome are they from? I'm assuming it's going to be yeah desert, grassland, aquatic. I'm going to go for the grassland rocks on this one because I think that they're probably the nicest. Uh, like I love these savanna rocks, um, and I'm just going to plot out a bit of a. A barrier here between the habitats and I might start in this section here um, just to build in kind of just to plot out if I put random rotation on as well um, then I can uh, oh I need to duplicate I'm just thinking why isn't it doing it I'm clicking control x but you need to control d to duplicate I'm going to build out a bit of an area and then I'll have a, a null barrier that goes across um, that goes through it and we can see see how wide it is or perhaps the better way to do it is to put the habitat gate in first let's add a wooden where do we want the habitat to start probably over here to connect up these sections a little bit and for realism i think we'll add uh, a wooden log here going into this habitat like that um, and we'll obviously uh, we'll obviously put some rocks in front of this so the elephant can't get out the elephants can't get out but now we can connect up our path quite nicely uh, so let's make this four meters and curve it round and now they've got quite a direct line through I really don't like that curve I'm gonna get rid of that there we go that's better. That's that's a much nicer curve. Uh, so now they can get to both these habitats from that route. And that, that's a bit more accessible. And then I'll tell you what, I'll do the null barrier first. Because it makes a lot of sense to carry it on like this. Let's check how wide that is. So that's 6,500. It is on the smaller side. I think I might just make it a little bit bigger and uh, give our elephants a little bit more room. Okay, that's 8,000 meters. I think that's a bit better because we can have a bit of a, we can have a water area kind of over here. I'm trying to think of where the water's gonna go because it needs to meet this, this filtration. And I think we could have a little water section that dips into this section and then kind of a much bigger water area over this side. Um, we need to name the habitat as well. It's going to be our African savanna elephants. Have I spelt that correctly? <laughs> African savanna. Yeah, I think I have. Wow. Well done, pause. <laughs> okay. So we've got that set up. Obviously, they can easily get out right now. So now we need to add in the rocks um, just along this. And I'm going to use these big ones as a general tool um, to go to go across. And then I'm going to use other rocks to fill in the spots between. I might vary the levels on these slightly as well. Now I'm going to grab another large rock and do the same thing. And again. <laughs> Okay, so that should technically be secure, but I think what we need to do now is add in another uh, layer of, of rocks, basically. We're just going to add in a bunch of different rocks to rough it up and make it kind of look different, because at the minute there's still a certain kind of uniformity around it. So I'm going to add those in now.
Okay, I've just added in some general rocks as well that breaks it up, but also kind of gives it a bit of character to the rest of the land so it doesn't look exactly the same. And I am going to add in a water area now as well. And I think I'm going to do it around this area. We can have a bit of like a rock pooly area. It's not going to be super deep. Um, I know they want to swim, but I'm sure they don't want to uh, be like, you know, <laughs> struggling to swim. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to add in a reasonable area over here. Um, but yeah, as I say, it's going to have deep areas and shallower areas. I think if we have a nice deep area at the back, that's better. And then we can have some more shallow areas around the front. There we go. I think that's probably a good area. Um, kind of like the water before. There we go. I quite like that. It's got some uh, some interest to it. It's got a bit of a rock rock pool in the middle there. Um, and we can always, you know, add a couple of very small waterfalls into the back as well, which, you know, you know, I love to do. And I'm sure the elephants would love in this case, if I can spell waterfall. There we go. It's got a small waterfall. That's that's as much as I'm doing in this one. A little waterfall that they can still play with. <laughs> um, I think that's good. Now uh, we do. We are going to have to change the makeup of this, but for now, I'm going to build the little guest area first because I really want them to get in and enjoy it. Oh, and I do need to make sure that this is rock all the way around as well. I need to add a few rocks in here, just to uh, probably uh, border this this habitat actually. So I'm going to do a little bit of a kind of a skirting of rocks around as well. There we go. I've added a bit of skirting around there now. So they've got that too. Now the rocks are the whole way around and they shouldn't be able to get out. So let's get on with building a little area for our guests, which I think is going to be cute. Okay, I think we've made a pretty nice guest uh, section here. I want to add in some education into this as well. And actually, a really important thing we need to do is actually buy our elephants, because that is that's quite important to an elephant avatar. <laughs> now, it looks like we've got a good male here. I'm going to grab him, because he's a lot cheaper than this one. Um, so I'm going to grab 
This one here is 27. How? Oh, they live ages. They live to 62. That's insane. Okay, I'm going to grab him. 27 seems fine. And then let's grab two females. Uh, this one seems good. Let's grab her. She's a little bit younger as well. And then maybe this female too. And they're all a similar age. In fact, this one's a bit more fertile. So I'm going to grab this one because that way, you know, it's a breeding zoo. Primarily, we just focus on them actually breeding, not about the, the quality of all of their genetics. It's just, you know, we need more of them. Ideally, yes, better genetics is always good, but that's not the, the primary focus. And then we can add a good amount of education through these boards here. And they're not gonna be ready yet, but we can uh, set them up at least so they are ready when, uh, the, when the animals go in. There we go. If we go into our animal trading, let's grab our animals and move them into quarantine, which is over here. And let's also check up on the how well our uh, education's going as well. If we look at our guests, our education's at 55. That's pretty good. Our toilet's at 71. This has definitely all gotten much better since we've uh, improved our education requirement, like our education provision. Um, oh, there's quite a few power sources failing, I think. Um, that's okay. I mean, they are going to go around and do them. It's it's one of those where it's like, I swear, they, they get the alert and then soon after the engineer fixes it anyway. So it's like, oh, okay, was that really necessary? Uh, let's request the keeper here. Got a disease risk. Oh, because of this. Okay. I mean, all right. Well, they'll get round to it. Um, let's have a look at who's on which work zone because we just had the the uh, the scare with our lemurs, didn't we? So I think maybe it's that we don't have enough keepers on this section anymore. Um, let's have a look at our work zones actually. What's this? This is Asia Asia entrance. Yeah, so this is five habitats. So I think this does need an additional keeper. Um, but what I might do? Mm, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep. I was gonna sort of think about maybe merging them, but they're not close either. I think we had two of them on Africa Middle. I'm just gonna move one of them over to Asia Entrance, and then we've got two on Asia Entrance, and then yeah. Oh, there's another one down here on Asia Entrance. Is that three on Asia Entrance? We don't need that many. Got Africa Middle. Let's sort by work zone. Two on Africa End. One on the Africa entrance, two on the middle, two on Asia end. Oh yeah, three on Asia entrance. I'm getting mixed up. I think I think we have two for each. Um, Asia middle, yeah, and exhibits. That's fine. Okay, we have three on Asia entrance. We could always move them to Africa. Um, Africa entrance only have one. Let's look at how big that is. Oh, it is only three habitats. Okay, fair enough. That's fine. Uh, let's see if the little switch around helps uh, sort things out for them. Um, but I'm quite excited about this little section over here. I think we need to get our elephants in and then we can properly see what it's going to look like. Um, but we can have a look at our habitat. We've got some enrichment already. So this is the enrichment. Ooh, tree scatter feeder. That's cool. Right, I'm going to whack that front and center right there. And then let's get a large barrel feeder over there. A fixed feeder over here let's go there a beaver pool now i don't think that's appropriate for them um i'm just gonna check that it's definitely the right ones uh africa savannah elephant okay beaver pool it does does work with them i'm not gonna put it in because that seems a bit weird i'm gonna add, add a rubbing pillar a hanging barrel feeder um a water pool can have one of those over in the water section and then some skittles and a sprinkler goodness we've got so many things throwing a snowball as well why not um the only thing we have missed is we haven't put any shelter in here and we are going to need some hard shelter now i am thinking it might just be best to whack in one of these very large shelters we've already used throughout the zoo um, just over here on the back um, I think that might be the best way to give them the, sh the shade that they need. Um, so I'm going to whack that in here. And I'm just going to move these rocks to the outside. 
Now let's just add in a little bit of bedding into here. And then they definitely know this is their, this is their bedding area. There we go. A nice big uh, shelter like we've got for the Indian elephants as well. Oh, multiple buildings are having problems. Right, let's go through. Oh no, diseased pandas. Oh, it's because of the cleanliness. That's annoying. Well, we've called the vet and hopefully they'll be sorted out. Let's move our elephants into the habitat now. And let's hope they can't break out. <laughs> so we haven't actually tested that yet, but I'm sure we'll be fine. <laughs> Okay, the red panda is being looked after. That's good to see. That's what we want. Now we do need to add some donation boxes in here. I'm going to add in... Um, I'm going to copy them across because we've already got our colours on the previous ones. Oh, I haven't put any donation boxes in here. Wow, okay. So we definitely need to add those in. Let's grab donation box. Duplicate. And then we're going to whack them in at every interesting point along here. There's definitely places for them to do that. So there's no excuses. <laughs> Everyone must donate. <laughs> now I'm going to copy this education uh, stand as well and whack that right at the front. Um, obviously, they're not going to be talking about the Western chimpanzees yet. I'm going to have them go in... Let's go November. Or December. Let's have them be in December. So I'm pretty sure December's... Oh, no, no. We need to leave space. So let's go. Let's go October. Uh, we need to leave space for our next uh, habitat because they're also going to be on the same work zone. And speaking of work zones, we need to add this in to Africa End. And perhaps this is the time to move that keeper from uh, Asia Entrance into... Let's move uh, Brogan again from Asia Entrance into our Africa End because we've got quite a, we've got a few more habitats in it now. How many is it? Oh, we've got four. So we definitely, definitely need them to move across. Oh, all of our things are uh, open. They're just having lots of high demand. I was thinking we have must, well, they're all like broken down or something, but it's fine. I think it's just that all our facilities, like a lot of our facilities are in high demand, especially the, uh, the ATMs, but that's good. That's what we want. People are drawing money out um, and they're spending more on the zoo. I mean, look at it. Wow. There's a lot of people here. So that's good to see. <laughs> We're drawing in almost 5,000 guests now. Oh, Maria's died as well. Oh, bless her. Well, you will be missed, Maria. And we've got some fighting of the pygmy hippos, probably because they've all grown up now. Yeah, there's loads of them. Oh my goodness, there's so many babies in here. They must have all just grown up. So we're going to probably... Yes, we can release you. We're going to release you into the wild. And then we've still got Gloria in here. Who else? Is that everyone else outside of the gender rate? I think that's it. I think it's because there's just one too many females. Um, but we've sorted that now. So that's good. That's what we want. Now we could probably add some conservation boards as well along here. And I think I'm going to do that because we don't have any in this area. Oh, about to have some null let we inbreed. We don't like that. Are you... Yes, Lupin's. This must be your child. So I'm going to put them on contraceptives for now. And when when Lupin dies, we'll, uh, we'll move them. Oh, they can't reach it. Ah, because I haven't put it into the zoo work zone. Which must mean that we've got some animals in here. So let's edit the zoo work zone. Add it in. Should also add all of these in. I don't know if I've been doing that, but it doesn't massively matter, does it? And let's have a look at our elephants. Oh my goodness. Wow. They are so beautiful. Look at them. Majestic. Wow, can you imagine seeing them? Oh, I'd love it. Absolutely love it. If you just stood here and you could just see them. Oh, actually, speaking of seeing them, let's uh, let's just check they can't escape. <laughs> can you escape? No, that's what we like to see. They've got lots of blue area, but they can't escape. They have enough area. They haven't got as much land area as we planned, but we'll just keep their numbers low. We'll probably just keep it to be two breeding females and uh, and then as many babies as they need because they've still definitely got more than enough like it is now. Um, and we do need to change the terrain painting. So they need more or less long grass, more long grass and more soil. So what I'm going to do is put a bit more of a soily area 
Actually, no, that doesn't make much sense. And a bit more of a soily area over here and more of a grassy area around the water. Um, let's have a mix of light and dark soil. And that can kind of be more of a play area. And then we can have short grass instead of long. And we'll mix in a bit of soil into here as well, just so it makes a bit of sense. Uh, I'm going to lower the intensity and have a bit of grass in there. And a bit of soil in here, just kind of blend it across. Okay, that should be what they're happy with. They're happy. They do need plants. They haven't got any plants yet, but generally they're happy. That's the only other thing we've got to consider with the space is that they need to have enough plants in here too. But I think I'll just go lighter on, on the plant requirements. I mean, they're happy with 0%, so I might just put a couple of trees in here and uh, and call it good. Oh no, we've lost an oryx as well. Oh, bless. We've got so many oryx now. We've done so well. And a gnarl lechwi. Oh, they're dying all over the shop. Oh, I'm about to inbreed with otters. Don't do that. Although you look really cute, that's not okay. Uh, you are presumably siblings? Yes. There we go. Okay, contraceptive. In fact, if you're siblings, I'm going to release you into the wild. 43. There we go. Who are you in here with now, Fernando? Ah, just babies. Okay, that's fine. They will grow up. We're going to need to get rid of Fernando at some point. And, uh and get new a new female because it seems like the other ones have probably died from old age oh wow look at them in the water they're so cool i love how look that like it's so cool the graphics of this you can see when they're dry and then when they've been in the water they're all wet there like, it's so cool oh that's a scary sign uh sound but it's just a doll dying okay that's fine that's pretty normal that's the sign of like them escaping normally that just came up i got a bit i got a bit scared then um right over to the side of the zoo let's put in some plants for these guys I'm gonna pause actually so nothing else happens we've got our selection criteria let's just add a few trees in i think maybe like one baobab tree they're cool one aren't they um with a tree. Wow, what are these? Okay, I'm gonna have a look and added a couple of trees and uh, and maybe a, a, just some reeds and stuff, and, and we'll keep it as simple as that. Okay, so I said I'm not going to add much in, and then I put literally like as much as I possibly can <laughs> um, into the habitat, but I think it looks pretty, and it hasn't really impacted their space too, too much. Um, it's a little concerning. We can always reduce it to one uh, breeding elephant if we need to, but I think it's quite good. And if we need to, we'll just take out some of the rocks and increase the, the navigatable land area like that. In fact, we could take out some of these already, um, which will have an impact. Um, so I might just do a couple of these, and then we'll, we'll call it good at that. Gonna release this horse into the wild as well, because they're outside of the gender ratio. And then we've got quite a lot of horses going on here. Um, they do need feeding, which is a problem. It's attracting protesters. But our keeper is here and they're aware of it now. So I think they'll probably we'll do what we did before. Um, if they start running to get food, we'll just drop them at the at the keeper hut and then move them back after. There he is. Make the food. Go, go, go. I shouldn't start making sounds like that when I make food. Just like, mmm. Makes you sound really normal and sane. <laughs> what is that? I keep getting that alert and I don't like the sound of it because it sounds worse than it is. It's absolutely fine. Oh, he's got the bucket now. Let's grab him and move him, pause the game, move him back here. Right, go in with your bucket, feed them. All right, everyone will be fine now, they can eat again, so that's fine. Sorted, right, crisis averted. <laughs> and we've got some happy elephants in here. 
Um, I think we're meeting all of their requirements. Uh, we're, oh, we need to turn our education stuff on because it's not going to be on. It's not going to be selected for the right animal. So let's put African savannah elephants. I'm hoping that all of this is going to be within. No, it's not going to be within power. That's fine though. We can add some more power in. It was gonna. It was bound to happen. And we need to check that their water is hooked up to the water supply, which I'm not sure it is. Oh, it is just nice. Well, that just works. <laughs> Uh, we do need more power though. So where are we falling short? I think that could just be adjusted. I think we'll just move this to here. Tell you what, let's delete these paths and we can definitely get this sorted. There we go. Oh, the water treatment is broken, but that's fine. We've got power now. So all of those signs will light up. They will work. Um, we can also select our educator to talk about the African elephants, which is perfect. And we should probably add some educational speakers as well, which we can just do in the corner of the room, I think. Uh, inside, I'm pretty sure these will have good coverage. Let's whack it on 20 and see how far that is. And then do the same on the other one. That's probably good because I'm not sure. Is anyone going to stand there? Yeah, they will. Okay, I'm just going to put this one on the left on 15 and we'll leave it at that. That's close enough. And that's a really good coverage still. Um, so they can learn about the African elephants. We've got, we've got habitat boards. We've got, In fact, we could put some more boards out here um, just on some standard posts uh, so people can continue to learn about them. I think I might do that uh, further along as well. There we go, so we've got a couple more posts in there too. I think that's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. And look at them. I hope they're happy. That's the main thing. And I hope you've liked this episode. If you have, please give it a like. It really helps the channel out. And I'll see you in the next one.